Hello and welcome to another scene set in Odessa Dark Crusade Season 2. So like this, we set, uh, set the scene uh, in uh, a one of the uh, well, suffice to say, one of the uh, noble lodgings within the nobles' quarter. Um, Oruk has always had a lot of sway with uh, nobility and uh, has uh, used that uh, influence to set up a little uh, meeting space for him and Irene uh, to discuss uh, philosophies and uh, trade information and engage in all sorts of pleasantries as, uh, as, as La Sombra do, as they're only but the most caring of, uh, caring of clans. Um, the house itself, as it is, it is a it is a, a noble house. It's not an estate or a manor or anything extreme. Um, uh, it's a simple uh, wooden room. There are, well, it's a room. Uh, no, probably, probably, would it have snow morph? We're gonna say it does. I don't know how good my history is, but uh, we'll say it does. It is a more expensive material in this time, and it's a very, it's a, it's, it's, it's a surprisingly uh, Spartan room, despite it being in a very. Uh, very prestigious neighborhood and being in a very prestigious house. Uh, there is plenty of um, luscious furnishings and uh, uh, obviously a, a table that was personally crafted for the building. Uh, and there are a few um, goblets of refreshments. Uh, but other than that, there isn't too much in the room, other than uh, a few a few torches to maintain the light. There is also uh, a single window for them to look out on into the night sky, which is clouded over this evening. And Oryx sitting there in his noble closings, waiting for the uh, desired participant. Wow. You say that so eloquently. Uh, there is a, a rap tap tapping on the door. A rather soft, almost apologetic knocking. Like, uh, yeah, he walks down the stairs uh, into the living area, which is uh, a bit more um, what you'd expect from a noble building. Um, and we'll uh, open the door for you. Yeah, in the doorway there is uh, yeah, the littlest La Sombra of this uh, of the city, uh, Lady Irina Giris. Um, she will curtsy as the door opens. And, yeah, we'll wait for Ulrich to start talking because, yeah, he is definitely the elder of the two of them. Jacob, like, will uh, return Jacob. her polite gesture. Wait, wait, what? We're both mixing up venues today. Um, <laughs> go sleep. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> um, oh yeah, man. He's here. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> um, and that was the end of Irene's tale. Oh she yeah. Lived a short life. <laughs> um. No, Ulrich merely returns your polite gesture with a uh, bow of his own. Lady Irene, please come in. Lord Ulrich, it is a. I, I thank you for your invite. And yeah, she will. She will walk in. Uh, he will 
hold the door open for her and then close it behind her. And we'll say, of course, it's a pleasure always to deal with one of my clients, especially yourself. Uh, our room's just upstairs. We have refreshments if you need any. You didn't want this scene, so you probably will. Yeah, she probably will. Because, yeah, if you f too. Ooh. Yeah, it's stupid. So, yeah, she'll she'll nod. It's like, she just came running right out of bed to make this time. <laughs> yeah, you make it literally just on time. You, you yeah. look a bit frazzled. <laughs> probably. <laughs> but you, you are still dressed as a, as a noble of your station would be. If I be because your style provides you with the appropriate clothing yeah. and jewelry, as you are unfortunately quite poor outside of your homelands. Yeah, there's not a lot you can take on the road, really. <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> but yes, you're led up to a room. Not if you're just a lowly child, let's keep it at that. <laughs> yeah. Um... You, you are, you are um, guided up to the room, um, and uh, there is uh, a. There are a couple of goblets of blood for the two of you, and uh, a, a large um, jug, for, for lack of a better term. Um, that holds a bit more, about maybe about a liter. Um, okay. Because because of your current blood pool, can you please make me a self control check? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you are a blood. <laughs> totally you are fair. three totally blood points, fair. so you you may yeah, only no. roll three dice. Okay. Hundred kindred do not resist the beast well. <laughs> Can I spend the willpower because she does not want to breach etiquette in any way, shape, or form? Yes, you may. It is only a difficulty five roll. Okay, I will still spend the willpower on this. You're not actually tasting the blood or anything. Um, okay, you get two successes. You beat yeah. down the beast of the force well, of your will. You kind of, you 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 look at, you gaze upon him and smell the blood, and you almost like feel it rise up for you to just. Almost just to like slam your face, it to just to just take it all, <laughs> um, to just 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 hoard it, like yeah. uh, like many an animal would. But <laughs> but you're a noble, and you are you have you've learned that uh, that is not how one conducts themselves. Maybe 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 the common folk and maybe the vagrants of the other clans do but you are you are held to a higher standard and uh, that that standard has paid off tonight yeah uh, like she got even gets like she makes a point of like making sure that she keeps her uh, composure so I rolled up to I only have two successes so yeah she um, she is just looking at the uh, at the goblets and averting her eyes away from it and um, We'll pretend exactly. that huh, it is indeed nothing. <laughs> Defender wins, so you're good. Yay. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, open up a seat for you. Uh, you are still very, very eager to drink this blood. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, like, yeah. <laughs> she is trying to make it look as casually as possible like she will not and she will not do drink unless like until he offers yeah and if you want you, me to roll self control for that again i will happily do so <laughs> uh you you if, or if etiquette you were not or clasping something. your hands they would literally be shaking right now yeah. um but uh he will um he will uh take a seat um and she'll kind of just gesture towards your drink, um, as if giving you permission to drink. Um, you don't have to roll self-control. Could you please roll subterfuge? Because you are really thirsty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are really thirsty. I will definitely roll subterfuge for that. And maybe etiquette to see if you can like pick it up um, 
I see yeah, everything. Both. Me both. Wow. Well, I got oh. four on my subterfuge. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he doesn't notice anything out of place there. <laughs> um, roll your uh, etiquette. Charisma etiquette. I have etiquette is literally my highest uh, thing, and so I have charisma etiquette of seven. Nice. Yes. All right. What is? And of his... course, there I only get two successes. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna roll his thing for that. Um. And he only gets one because I'm just rolling like a million ones today. So <laughs> he doesn't perceive anything there either. You, 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 you still uh, with two successes. You still kind of take the goblet unnaturally quickly, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. a bit too fast, and perhaps uh, if Ulrich um, were more focused on that, uh, he'd notice, but he doesn't, or he doesn't seem to think much of it. Maybe. Um, you might, it might be due to the fact that you're in fact a fledgling, and maybe he's just assuming that uh, <laughs> you're a little bit nervous, but you're still yeah. acting in good taste, <laughs> which is appreciated. Yes! <laughs> He'll just take a sip. Um, you sip, you taste nothing. Nope. <laughs> uh, the sensation of blood... Uh, Traveling down your throat is uh, ecstatic as always, but the taste is not there, and it almost yeah, it is not it is not the same as biting someone and drinking from them directly. It doesn't feel as good. No. No. But she'll um like she'll she'll actually try to uh, look at, at Ulrich to see if this is like because she will probably know from her sire that there are like some really good types of blood, some like little worse. Like yeah, animal blood would be bad. So she's just trying to determine off from from like his expression and tries to kind of mimic the um yeah the feeling of that. <laughs> Basically, um, trying to be like, is this a good wine? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that would be manipulation, manipulation etiquette. Manipulation etiquette, sure. Yeah. yeah so you you try to look like you appreciate his taste and that you know exactly what sort of vintage this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, that is one day. So that's six. Four successes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Irene is literally bossing us. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, yeah, you're totally fine. Uh, <laughs> you. You can kind of, it's probably high quality because Oryx seems to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of hard to tell because it's just a facial expression he makes. He seems yeah. to enjoy the taste. Um, <laughs> it's, it's more like, yeah, is he, is he appreciative of it or is he like pulling his nose or anything, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah no, he seems appreciative of the taste and, you know, kind of. Mm. And he will, after, after the little drinking session, uh, he will say, How do you like the taste? Oh, so mean. <laughs> because my social future is not as high. So she will... Um, she will not. It is... Um, yeah. <laughs> she will just, she will just say, I have, no, I have no words to describe this. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's like botching a subterfuge roll right there. No, like she stays quiet for a long time. Then it's like I have no words to describe this. She says which she I no will make, <laughs> which I will make a subterfuge check for, but it's technically not a lie because yeah, she doesn't have any words to describe it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I realize this is definitely like subterfuge worthy, and I buy oh, you buy the, uh, yes. the, the dice roller reflects my role playing capacity. I a success, but you botch. So I this basically counts as five successes for Auric. You say you have no words. <laughs> as you say these words, um, 
you they come across as so stilted. They come across as dodging the question. They come across as yeah. nervous. It, you That's come exactly across as you're deliberately you trying to hide something. Now, of yeah. course, this doesn't necessarily give away what it is. Mm. Um, one could say you even um, <coughs> cough. Uh, like, on the uh, as you're drinking the blood, you actually cough a little bit. Um, on the blood. You don't spit it out. And Auric kind of raises a single eyebrow. He will lower her gaze immediately to the table. And he kind of looks at the goblet for one second, looks at it. That's a, that's a shame, I thought you would have enjoyed it. It's very noble vintage. My lord, I apologize. I, I did not mean to. Um, I did not mean to literally uh, to, say, to say anything bad about your taste. It's. I'm only saying something bad about mine. As. Um, I hope this stays in, in this room. I don't, I can't taste anything anymore after being embraced. Ark. Yeah, he, he notches a finger and rests his chin on it. Hmm, I see. That's very rare. I'm sorry to hear about that. Yeah, and um, I didn't want to be rude, and um, in doing so, I made the situation worse. You don't need to apologize. It's hardly your fault you're embraced of a condition you can't control. No, but as you can understand, being straightforward about it is a risk. Don't worry. I'll keep your secret safe. Thank you. How have you been doing, though? Ever since no. yesterday. I know that meeting got more tense than either of us would have liked. Yes. Um, I have heard some interesting facts about that meeting. After we left, the um, uh, Gufran and myself had a uh, chat to get to know each other a bit better and to talk about our plans for this um, investigation. He told me, which probably was the reason why you let us leave and not the salubri as well. She kind of purses her lips at that, disapproving. Yes. I would have expected more from one of the unicorns. She did not, sir. Uh treat us in good faith. Although, if you heard about it, that also means another individual is not acting in good faith. I beg your pardon. Well, that's not entirely true. From what I could gather, at least one individual in that room was aware of what I was about to lambast that neonate for. The 
But yeah, she's dropped on us. As for why, I'm not particularly sure, but she seemed awfully keen to dodge any semblance of responsibility. Um, Setite had informed me that he caught on to it and then tried to distract her from it. Hmm. I'll make Auric make intelligence a learner's check. Intelligence, yeah, it would be intelligence or whatever. No successes. Or it's having a bad day today. <laughs> well, you can't necessarily trust the word of the Setai. He obviously came out uh, on top in that uh, in that situation. He's most likely trying to push that advantage on you. Perhaps. It is something of a shame that out of a salubri, a brujar, and a setite, it is the setite that ends up looking like the most mm, well reasoned and polite people in the room. Next to yourself, of course. She will take that compliment with a slight nod and small smile, probably. <laughs> I should not have asked you to step away from the conversation. That would have saved a lot of trouble. No, what you brought to me was important and I appreciate it being brought to my attention. On that topic, I, I have acquired some additional information that I would prefer to speak with you first about before filtering it to those who wish to help in the investigation. Please do tell and I'll pass it along to your compatriots. I am not sure if everything that I've heard is something is smart to pass along but um, one of my sources has um, has told me that there is a link between this beast that we're hunting and the creature that you are hunting personally in a way and that they have engaged with each other and fighting in the northern watch to our tower. Apparently he has a way of tracking her. He or it. Mm -hmm. The um the person that gave me this information told me that there are basically two parties. There is the creature and there is her. And then there is a winged creature as well that we both presume is on her side and not on the creatures or a third party. There's more than one. That's good to know. If one of these creatures can track her, then You might be able, we might want to keep track of that one and observe it rather than detain it for the moment. 
yes. Or, if it is in a way sentient, try to get it under our control rather than let it roam free. But that would require an entire di entirely different approach than simply attacking it. Sorry, what did she just say for that last comment? Uh, that it would acquire an entirely different approach than simply attacking it. If they were going to try and strike a deal with it or bring it under the, um, our command, basically. It's still a breach of traditions. We probably just want to keep a Statila on it. But maybe something the Nosferatu or the Setite can handle. As for the rumors of a winged creature, well, our task is a lot simpler with that one. I still presume that it is a partner of her. both from what my sources told me as well as from the dream you g I told you about. Even though the wings are different, they were still wings. Of course, I do not wish to stave too much simply on a dream. I would advise caution when it comes to inter uh, deriving information from prophecy. The devil is in the details after all. Hmm. I take them, um, well, I take it into account, but I can't base theories on it. I can only play with it. suggestions. It's no more than that. I've been in this city for a, a very, very long time. I've had to leave it on occasion, but I've always come back. It's possible your dream points elsewhere. There are a few bits and pieces I've gathered from what you've dreamt of that could point you in several directions. I see. Do you wish for me to pursue those points? Or would you prefer if I just let it rest, leave it for what it is, my lord? I would prefer you don't go, lest you find what you're looking for. From my perspective, you can either find what it is that your dream is pointing you towards, and that is not a fate I'd wish upon you. Or you fail in that task and you are safe. So perhaps it would be best if someone older and more prepared were to go in your stead and you relay what you see. So that your dreams right? may still be of value to the court. Yes, my lord. 
do you have someone in mind for that task or someone you deem capable of looking into it? There aren't many that could go after what you're looking for, and return in one piece. Hunting this creature is a task I have for myself, so, so I would offer to go in your stead. Yes, my lord. That does confirm my suspicion then. You do agree with me that that dream was about her? Yes, from all the details I've garnered, it would. The other pieces to it, however, I'm unsure of. There's only the person in the vision, not in everything else. The other, uh, there are most likely clues to something as Riddles love to embed clues in themselves. But... Mm -hmm. Unraveling such enigmas is not my specialty. And making this information too public could endanger you. Not just to her, but to other people who'd wish to exploit your gifts. Or possess them for themselves. I am aware of that, my lord. So, I'll do what I can for now. I can't promise this will lead you anywhere. But that is the nature of your gift, I suppose. Yes. I have on occasions had dreams that I still do not know what they mean. My Some no dreams well. are just dreams. Oh, I am fully well aware of that, my lord. <laughs> there is a certain quality to it, a certain feel that distinguishes these ones from the real ones. But even in that, I am not 100% sure because dreams are also not my point of expertise. That is perhaps the tricky aspect of having this ability and not being one among the clan that has them so often. It is not something we're adept at diffusing on our own. Oh, see, what is uh, Irene doing with her goblet of blood? Has she drank all of it? Has she gotten some more? Is she stirring it? She probably drank it until like there is like a little left, but she would not readily help herself to more. I mean, definitely not. Her being a fledgling in the presence of, well, Baron or a former prince of the city, she would definitely not even dare to to give herself more. So she 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 left like a, a little bit in the glass and is. From time to time looking into it and from time to time just twirling gla or the goblet around in her hands and just, yeah. You're twirling the goblet around and it looks... Um, it looks back at you. <laughs> it, uh, it doesn't look back at you. Um, <laughs> it's, it's actually quite a nice goblet. Uh, like... Despite the uh, 
the, the lack of decoration in this room, other than some lavish furnishings and a table. Um, and the torches. Mm-hmm. Uh, the goblet is well made. Um, uh, as you kind of look at it like this, you know, you're, you're just kind of messing around with it a little bit as you talk with uh, Auric. Uh, please. Um, one second, I need to look at the roll for this. How oh dear. As you look up the role, like Irene has on multiple occasions just expressed how she loves to touch certain materials, just feel it. So, yeah, that is definitely why she is probably like toying a little bit with the goblet, kind of let her hands glide past it from time to time, just to get the sensation of the uh, material under her fingers. Funny enough, Oryx seems to relate to that statement. He seems to approve of your... Um... Almost childlike curiosity, in a sense. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, encourages you to explore more as I uh, look up this roll. Uh, please make me a perception awareness check. Okay, perception awareness. On a diff seven. It's nine nine seven if you need to have the uh... Oh. Sorry, did you make the check? Five nine three yes. nine seven? Yes. I three successes. Mm-hmm. For the barest moment, uh, you see something. You can't because you are toiling this goblet. Or you're not toiling it, but you're looking at it and you're touching it and you're feeling it. And then, and then you kind of sense like a ever so slightly different texture on it. Uh, please roll intelligence, occult. Oh dear. Okay. Um, intelligence, occult. Do I even have occult? I guess I do, but. Int and oh, I do have a cult. It is not a pretty dice pool, but it's it's not too bad of one. Two successes. Uh, on this goblet, you kind of feel a bit of a rough texture on once a rough texture on one side. As you take your your two fingers off. You see an image that wasn't there before. Uh, of yourself. Uh, being wrapped in a loving embrace. By the same woman you saw before. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, there is uh, another person in this image. You can see just out of the corner of your eye, or rather, he's just very small in the image. He seems to be uh, grabbing at your hand, kind of holding it high. Um, you can't tell who it is. It's too small. It's his face is concealed by a veil. You can tell it's uh, by a stature. It's a man, of average height, um, and you appear to be enjoying yourself in this image. Okay. <laughs> um. You are literally being bitten in the neck as if you are being embraced. But it's not uh, Celine. It is. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well. Um, her... How much? How much? How, how unsettled uh, 
is Irene by that. Yeah, pretty much. Like, yes, yes, yes. Like, she is, she is just staring. Like, even after the image is gone, she is, she, she is like, death struck. She, her eyes are wide and she's staring into the glass. Or the goblet, sorry. It's a goblet, it's a goblet, not a glass. Ta -da. I'm, I'm not move, even. Do you uh, move the goblet? Subterfuge. Do you move the goblet in any way? Um, well, she was twirling it, so she would probably keep doing so. Like you almost stop, stare, you twirl it, and then it's back to normal again. Auric is just drinking. Yeah, she'll put the goblet down. May I, uh, may I pour you another? Um, yes. Um, please, my lord. She, like, she still has those very human responses to things, so she blinks and, um, like, probably even, like, breathes uh, a bit faster than she did before because, yeah, like, she still has those reflexes. Auric will pull you another. Are you okay? You look nervous. Um... Come, come, take a seat over here. It's more comfortable. And he'll take you over to, uh, uh, what is, uh, basically a soft looking sofa. Basically. Yeah, she'll. It's, it's more like a giant plushy cushion in a way. <laughs> it's because of the way it's designed, but it functions as a sofa. Medieval fat boy. She uh, she will let herself be be led basically yeah. And he will um he will sit you down. She kind of glances over to the one window, almost as if she expects expects to see something there. Yeah, then looks back at Ulrich and doesn't really know what to say right now. Like, my my lord, forgive me. I um. It was her just now. He will, uh, close the window and, uh, He'll do is he'll sit down with you and he'll wrap an arm around you and take one of your hands in his uh, in a reassuring fashion. Do not worry, you are safe here. I saw her with someone else, a man, and someone else as well. Um, with me. She was she was feeding off me.
I see. Are you okay? Yes, my lord, of course. Um, I see, is she actually okay? Because she sounds very, very nervous and distressed. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, you, you don't need to roll because, yeah, she, she is... Uh, she tries to kind of get herself back together again, but it's... Um, it's yeah. failing. She's very, very yeah. nervous at this. Um... Auric just kind of uh, allows her to lean on him if she wants. She will try not to because, yeah, I mean, she did have a decent upbringing and, you know, she, she tries desperately to, to get her composure back together. I will say make me a self-control roll. I will do so. Mm, I would need to look up my self control actually. Uh, <laughs> it's a three. It's a three. I figured as much. Yes, because I put my virtues in wrong. But it is a three. I don't mean the numbers, I just mean what, what it says. <laughs> mm. If I didn't actually define the difficulty than... for this. One. I didn't she define did the difficulty for this role when I should have, because I was going to say make it higher difficulty. So unfortunately, I, I, I no, I do definitely agree with that. I, I would say um, no. Yeah, you're just too shaken. Um, yeah. So I, I guess you do <laughs> lean on him. I guess. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I beg your pardon, Lord Ori. I, I apologize. No, you are being burdened with much for your age. This is not right. You are handling it better than most would. Be proud of that. I. I yeah. Yes, my lord. You can speak freely around me. You can simply call me Auric if you wish. Don't allow my former station to chasten you with me. If you are if you need to say something, you may simply state it. I'm here to reassure you, not frighten you. Thank you, Sir Ulrich. Um, if it is okay with you, I would prefer to keep etiquette in place. If only so, I would not make the mistake of accidentally addressing you wrong in public. That's fair. You say this as you lean on my shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> He, he kind of gives her a bit of a cheeky grin. Because Auric is nothing if not a little bit mischievous. <laughs> oh, God. I... I apologize, my lord, again. Um, I am honestly a little scared, but... Is it wrong to say intrigued as well? No, it's Why would not. you be after me? I'm only what I am. I'm no one of importance yet. You're a very gifted and talented person. Or it's possible that she's not and that she will be. There's no way to tell. I mean... I wouldn't even know. I said, I'm still rather insignificant. I, I doubt that this is now. 
right? Right. She's definitely looking for a combination of it. Yeah, our our will confirm uh, her her hopes rather than destroy them. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was still another suspicion that she had, but um... and we'll kind of jostle her lately as if to reassure her. It's in a very compassionate gesture. I would prefer not to have that future happening. I can promise you I'll do everything in my power to stop it. It will not come to pass. Thank you, my lord. Are these things you'd rather forget? Or are they things you'd rather hold on to? That is a very difficult question, my lord. That is like asking someone who can read, but read sometimes horrible things if they would prefer to be without that knowledge. There are moments that I would definitely wish to not know about them. But as said, not knowing about it Keeping that ignorance, it feels, it feels wrong in a way. Unless you would, of course, prefer for me to not remember this. I know you do not want any of the neonates involved in this research and you are probably well aware that I am not even that. I would not forcibly take away what is yours like that. Well, I would only ask if you yourself would want that. No, my lord. I would not. However fake these messages may be, they can still be of value and they can be used, if not by me, then maybe by you or by any other gay knight in the city. I do want to be of use. You're so, of use, but don't think your visions are the only thing that makes you useful. Oh, I'm I'm well aware of that, my lord. <laughs> But if this could give you in any way an edge, then I would be happy to provide such an edge. I have dealt with these for most of my life and after. They are just different now. Life was in a way, simpler. When, well, before I met Lady Celine. 
The truth is often complicated. Um, I, I would like to add that in no way I regret having met the Lady Selene. How true is that? Let's see. That is true. Okay. Like, she adores Celine. Uh, <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> Mama knows best. Um, yes. <laughs> Anoric is your fun loving uncle. <laughs> it would be nice to learn to. Toner is trying deal to with stop us better. from bonding. Across the data streams. Um, <laughs> um, Auric will uh, actually, though, um, ask. What was life like before your embrace? If I may ask, I know it is a very personal question. I apologize if I'm prying. No, it is fine. It was simple to the point of boring my lord i my father owned an estate a day out of athens my i had a lot of older sisters and a younger brother so many women in the house i was of little value the good thing of that was that i was promised to a monastery and my education was formed there up so i unlike my sisters have a more scholarly upbringing where they were taught to keep households and keep their husbands happy. But it was in a way boring, if you understand. <laughs> and when a merchant came to our house with lovely fabrics, really, my sisters all fawned over them, even my father who was a man who loved more visual pleasures. And I looked at her and I just knew. And later that night I found a moment of quiet and introduced myself to the Lady Celine who I told her that I was the one that she was going to take along with her. I didn't know. I didn't know anything at the time. Fascinating story. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> See, sometimes you should just take credit. <laughs> does that actually make her laugh? Uh, yeah, it probably does a little. <laughs> <laughs> I have learned that modesty goes a long way, my lord. This is true. I might I perhaps repay with a story of my own. Please, I would love to hear anything, my lord. The story goes back a fair distance. I was... Born in France, a long time ago now. 
almost 200 years ago. As was my mother, actually. <laughs> Although not that long ago. My human mother. Apologies. I'm sure she was a wonderful person. I wouldn't know. I'm sorry. She shrugs. I was fortunate in that I was born to a fairly prestigious house. Although it was not a life I was made for. Courtly intrigues were initially uninteresting to me. I found that many of them were often purposeless constructs merely there because people had made them to be, rather than for thinking as to why they were there at all. I fell in line uh, with one of the fledgling knightly orders of the time. It was during this time that after one of the many conflicts that the mortal world constantly finds itself within, came back. And perhaps like your Lady Celine, Lady Katharina was there. And I introduced myself to her and who I was and where I came from and what it was that I did. Most importantly, why? You must understand, I was quite naive at the time. You will smile at that. And it was... about a fortnight or so after our first meeting that I was embraced by her to fulfill some sort of purpose that she could not on her own. For all our talents, no one person can do everything after all. And she saw something in me that she did not see in herself. I spent about two decades under her tutelage. And perhaps teaching me that there was more to courtly intrigue than I once imagined. He smiles at this. Before leaving for the Crusades, and then his face turns a little bit and looks a bit, he doesn't look away from you, but he looks a bit downcast, like his smile you can tell just sours a bit. As I said, I was very naive in that aspect. I was there on the first crusade, on the night that Jerusalem was taken. Funny enough, that city was ruled by our clan at the time. It now is once again. As she sees the uh, sad smile, um, she would actually place her hand on his.
I never followed my sire's road or the road of heaven, but I was still an ardent follower and in Christ. I was not the same man leaving the crusade as I was when I entered it. I hesitate to speak on what I saw that night. I have read stories, my lord. I do not envy you. Some I am glad you may never hear. It's during that time that I stumbled upon Odessa. I wasn't willing to return to my home. I was. unsatisfied with what I'd become. And I'd been involved in so much conflict that perhaps I think it's time, it would be time that I put down my sword for a time. Ironic that I take it up again. It was during that time I'd been around for a few months, and that's when the new prince to move Jerusalem entered our city and declared that they needed a baron. I met many interesting individuals in the early years of Odessa. Did you know it was possible as a canine to summon the spirits themselves? Spirits, my lord? Believe it or not, I am privy to supposedly some sort of eth ethereal jaguar being summoned at the hands of some particularly audacious canine. That sounds... Hmm. I would almost say it sounds heresy. Like heresy, but... Heresy. Many, uh, well, my upbringing was Christian, but... I have learned in these nights that even that is something that is... Well... Humanity doesn't hold all through truths, I would say. No. I'm still adapting to that. Do you still believe it? Or do you still have faith in God? Yes. I'm glad to hear. Hopefully you may represent him better than I have. I also realize that I have yet a lot to learn. And I hope I will not fail him. Whatever path you set me on. If I may make a suggestion that might seem a bit unorthodox to you. Yes, my lord. Something I've noticed by talking to you is that there are many things one knows by being young that they forget when they're older. A 
he points um, he, he says for example there are many roads in our society many ways of thinking many ways to push back the beast But it is the first one that remains the most populous and the most successful. The one that has always existed before all the others. You still breathe. Yes, my lord. <laughs> Do not think of it as a bad habit to get rid of. While it may be needed as a person, as a canine, you might find it wanted. My there. sire has informed me many times that I don't need it, but it is something that is very rooted in me still. And that is something that many people forget as they get older. Simple acts such as breathing, talking, talking, activating ones, flash of color of life that even those not on our road must engage in from time to time is a reminder of who we once were and who we still are i can't claim myself to be an elder but i am experienced enough to see many canites who are simply flitted from philosophy to philosophy, from road to road, as if none of it ever mattered. In their rush for prestige, power, or to simply look impressive before those that are the elite of our society. I suppose we oh sorry. No, please. My lord, I apologize for interrupting. I suppose what I'm trying to say is is you should never you should not change your road. Not for something you want, or if you want to change. But only if you feel like you need to. Ultimately, no one can force you to change your road. You are simply yourself. That is perhaps the most important thing about our own road, that we are simply us. She, um, she kind of smiles. Not too long ago, I had a very similar conversation with one of the Zimichi. And both of us agreed that living or not living the way we do, it will change us. There is no way of stopping said change. And in a way, it is necessary. But there will always be, however small a part, that will remain. Hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm. I suppose there'll always be change. I... Hmm. And he has this like reminiscent look, almost nostalgic looking. It's funny that the man I once most admired was not actually an adherent to my road at all. He was a follower of the chivalric code. He just understood it in a way no other follower of his path did. My sire follows that road. There are still it's... lots of apologies again. Oh, no, no. I see that was my fault. You got taught. <laughs> there is still a lot that I would need to learn about our society, about roads, about our life and way that we view things. Life is what you want it to be. I've received several offers over the years. To change the way I think. Sorry. <laughs> well, hello again. <laughs> I've been given many offers over the years to change the ways I think. But despite how, despite how I admired those who were on a different path than I, ultimately I could never change my own because it was not who I was and it's not who I wanted to be. She nods. Many people over the years that you exist will try to change how you think. But only you can change how you think. No one else can decide that for you. She thinks about that. Well, I think in an ideal situation, you are right. Oh, you're a cynic. Uh, well, no, my lord. But <laughs> I was thinking even of our own clan's power. Literally controlling minds. And with that in mind, I would say that, unfortunately, there are ways that one can change someone else's mind. I've seen that enacted on people before. It's... It's 
so easily abused. But I'd argue even that part can only do so much. It's not a matter of perhaps having power over another, but perhaps the very choice itself only being able to be made by the individual in question. Not that it's a limitation of the ability, but an inherent part of the choices one must make. Sometimes it's not a measure of one's power. It's simply that the choice can only be made by this one person. Because it could not be any other way. Perhaps that's just me being naive. My lord, you have seen and experienced a lot more of the world than I have. And I do thank you for your wisdom. It is something that I will keep in mind. Thank you for hearing me out. The pleasure, honestly, was all mine. These conversations, these, they are teaching moments. And each conversation I have with someone, especially a more experienced individual, such as yourself, gives me more insight in what the nights ahead might show me. Would you mind if we have more of these conversations in future evenings? It would be an honor, my lord. It'd be a pleasure to Share my time with you, Irene. Lady Irene, my apologies. Irene is just fine. I am, after all, in our society, hardly a lady yet. But as per your own request, I must adhere to etiquette, and you are very much a noble. A fine that one, is... if I must be so bold. <laughs> uh, my lord, now you are flattering me. I will no longer take up your time, as I am sure that you have many things to do in these current nights. I thank you for hearing me out, and I Thank you for your support. If something like that comes up again, I will inform you, if you so wish. I would, and I appreciate you sharing your time with me, Lady Irene. But let it be known, there is nothing I will be doing where I cannot make time for yourself. My lord, you are too kind, and I would be, it would distress me a great deal if you would put aside important business on my behalf, and I would not wish it so. He will, uh, he's still sitting, but he'll kind of, um, he's actually still got, yeah, because you've got his hand in his and he's got an arm wrapped around it, so he'll just kind <laughs> of like do a slight bow. 
like it's very slight, of course. Kafal always does a good chance that <laughs> that just knocks into yours. <laughs> Interesting, <laughs> but let's not. <laughs> she will, uh, yeah, she will, she will stand up, um, and uh, I'll take My... a step back and curtsy. All right, cool, bow. My lady, might I have the great honor of escorting you home? Yes, my lord. If you so wish. The honor would be mine. Thank you, my lady. And he will, um... Why did do it where, you know, they kind of... Lock arms, that's it. Um, and he will uh, begin escorting you home. Um, however, whereas one think might think the CNs here, it does not, because oh, as dear. they're walking home, uh, because your home probably lies in the Merchants District. It does. It does. As you're walking home, uh, there is a, a man who just appears to be closing up shop for the evening. Uh, a man wrapped in this... in... Uh, in several uh, several robes, looks to be uh, of the the middle class, the merchant class. As he uh, spots the two of you, uh, and will simply wave you over. Ah, my friends. What a what a wonderful coincidence to see you this evening. He does a deep bow before you both. Yeah, I mean, we'll curtsy. My sincerest apologies for interrupting you at this time. I'm sure you're on, way, on your way to things far more important than myself. It's just, perhaps, if I could inquire for a moment of your time, Lady Irene, but of course, Lord Ulrich, I'm sure you have more important things to do. And uh, But Ulrich will kind of wave him off and leave the choice up to Irene. She will... Uh, yeah, she'll look at um, at Ulrich, um, and look at the man. And she has seen him before, right? Yeah, you know this man is Omar Shadid. Yeah, uh, he's a near native clan of Sombra. Yeah, a well-known. Oh. He's a he's a fairly well-off merchant. Usually deals in the bazaar, not the merchants' district. Funnily enough, <laughs> she will um she will look at Lord Ulrich and it's like um. My lord, I would not dare to impede on your company any longer. I will listen to, well, our brother here, if you, unless you disagree with this. The choice is yours, my lady. I thank you for your time. He appears to be a bit more distant in public with you. Mm -hmm. My lord, it is not you who should wish or should thank me. It's quite the other way around. I thank you for your time and patience. And I will hope that we will meet again. Likewise, make me a perception uh, empathy roll as, uh, as he bows. Okay. Mm. Oh god, I hope she's not insulting him. Oh god. <laughs> it's 
perception empathy you said right yep <laughs> nothing <laughs> yeah you, you don't see anything so he just you know he bows to you in a noble fashion um, you know that he's being more distant with you in public, kind of like how both of you kind of almost planned it out in a way. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, he will. Uh, he will uh, be on his way, and uh, walk off into the night, leaving you with uh, uh, the the far less desirable figure of uh, this man. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I am Shadid. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. My apologies for interrupting you. Uh, I was just closing up one of uh, my many businesses. Would you... Uh, would you care to have a meeting inside? It's far less uh, cold out there, uh, in there. I'm sure you can imagine. We've got many layers on. He actually kind of makes the joke of literally pointing out his layers, and he's got like three <laughs> layers on, despite being in like the middle of the Middle East, because it's actually quite cold. Yeah. Um, she is going to perception empathy him. Uh, yeah. Just, you, you know, to be sure. Mm -hmm. Only one success. Uh, he seems to be fairly honest in his dealings with you. He's just trying to make a joke and lighten the mood. That okay. seems to be who he is, really, from what you've gathered. He seems to be a well, um, a well humoured fellow. She'll, uh, she'll nod, and we'll, uh, we'll follow him in. Um, when you go in, uh, I should, uh, I should also mention I have another guest with me. His, uh, his name is Akaib, a good man. I see. Uh, you're in. I know you've only been in the city for a short time, but don't worry, you're in good company. I deal with him uh, on a regular basis. Well, I would trust the brother. And I will roll subterfuge because, to be honest, with, with Mary in the city, she does not particularly trust everyone this quite is equally. <laughs> So she will roll subterfuge for it. Oh man, was that your subterfuge roll? Is that your one success? No, 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 no. That's still the empathy roll. Here's the subterfuge roll. Okay. And it's still one success. Like, really. <laughs> What's his empathy? It is. Okay. Well, I mean, you know. Well, she's not lying, per se. She he gets wouldn't. no successes, so. Uh, yeah, that's true. Like, I mean. Honestly, she wasn't. She wasn't really lying, but there was more like, yeah, there there was a little bit hidden there. But he but, uh, he yeah, seems to be quite pleased with you, frankly. Um, and uh, yeah, he will walk you in, and you'll also see this gentleman uh, as you walk in. Huh. Okay. I have seen him in Elysium, I believe. Yes, yes you not, do. I do not. Have, I did not talk to him, but I did see him, probably. Uh, yes, you do. One moment, as I actually get this correct. Uh, um, and. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, and they uh, they offer you a seat. Both of them seem quite polite. Yeah, she'll uh, she'll take it. I apologize for one of the images being rather small. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> and uh, Haki will uh, bow for you. Hello there, I am Haki. One of the many neonates of this city. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. My name is Arin Arquires. Ah, I remember that name. 
you were quite popular in Last Elysium. <sighs> and all of them it is. I... I feel my... <laughs> she will she will smile um but look away i feel my my presence in elysium and my contribution to that has been gravely exaggerated sir well but unraveling the lies of a newcomer is something to be commended for all we know he could have been uh an outlaw I was merely satiating my own curiosity sir something I can respect I too am a very curious individual I'm a historian of sorts I see yes yes this fine gentleman right here he gets me many uh, <laughs> Many unusual uh, items from time to time. We do good business together. Hakeem seems to smile at um, Omar's kind of uh, uh, borderline boisterous exaggerations. <laughs> Just smiles at him. Yeah, She'll sometimes I well. acquire things out in the field and. Well, she, uh, my good friend Omar here has a fine reputation for being a, a good and honourable businessman. So we work very well together. Hmm. I hear you're a woman of many talents yourself. Oh, oh no, no, not I. I am... Um... Really trying to do my best to be of service to this fine city, my lord. Although I do love to learn new things in many ways. I said it is a sort of curiosity, I believe. Yes, from what I hear, you are a very well-educated woman, yes. My former relatives have provided me with an excellent base, and I only hope to add on to it. Perhaps then I might be able to indulge your curiosity. Regarding the history of this region, my lord. Yes. As I said, I'm a historian and in many ways... Uh, the term archaeologist doesn't really exist yet, so I'm just <laughs> going to say it. Um, archaeologist. She kind of figured as much. <laughs> <clears throat> she would refrain from... from even thinking the word grave robber, but... <laughs> yeah, he doesn't call himself a grave robber. He's like, he acquires artifacts uh, that have been yeah. lost to time. Um, you can pee an Eva statement if you want. Sure, you will do. Will do, buddy. Yeah, you do it. You can do it. And then you got much. No. Uh, okay, you got one success. Has one success. <laughs> uh, he seems actually surprisingly earnest. He doesn't view himself as a grave robber at all. Oh, of course not. He definitely thinks he's uh, reoccurring what has been lost to time. In fact, he's quite zealous about it. There's like <laughs> a quiet zeal to it, though. 
it's not it's not over it's not overtly pronounced. You would be surprised how many ruins exist of in this region, many of which have been lost to time completely. Others have been discovered, but their secrets have not been unraveled. Many simply do not have the interest they are willing to remain in ignorance regarding the issue, despite the rewards or mysteries that might be discovered. As someone who has engaged in several uh, expeditions before, I can tell you there is much to learn from the ancient past that is not adequately explained by mortal scholars who are often either too afraid or too wrapped up in their own ideology to seek them out. It is a shame. I, I hail from the, the old country of Greece. I can assure you that the knowledge that history can hold is not unfamiliar with myself or my sire, in fact. I think she would be genuinely interested as well. If I may, and may I do say beforehand that this is no insult to yourself or your sire, um, but if I may ask that you refrain from informing your sire for the moment. He will raise an eyebrow at that. We would not wish to raise her expectations and then have them crashing down. That is not only an embarrassment for her, but would put a lot of political pressure on us as well. Especially if it becomes a prominent issue within the city. I see. Of course, I would never, I would never ask for uh, your assistance in Scotch scholarly pursuits without payment. But you would ask of my assistance without hmm. I understand. But everything is above board. I'm sure I am. Um, I'm sure you are closely connected to your sire. And perhaps if things go well, we might inform her of our accomplishments, but. It would not be wise to risk deceiving one as prestigious and powerful as her. I would never dare give her a false promise, as I would not give a false promise to anyone of the appropriate station. She's gonna pee and eat this motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she does not trust this. But Good. like not telling my sire. <laughs> like that's <really>? right. <laughs> Come on. You uh, filthy goody two shoes. <laughs> I'm gonna check this guy's freaking subterfuge. <laughs> it's well, I mean it's actually not that bad. Um 
Um, but up, but up, but up, uh, zero. Okay. <laughs> My rolls today are literally garbage. Um, so what you get from this guy is, uh, there is obviously more to it than not wanting to tell your sire. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not necessarily, it doesn't come across as, oh, I want to do something incredibly shady. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kill the local canine sort of devious evil. <laughs> um, it, it's a bit more, si you, you, you're not entirely sure what it is. Perhaps it's a bit more simplistic in nature, maybe a bit more petty, selfish. Maybe he doesn't trust your sire. Of course, you can't inherently tell, but it doesn't come across as overtly malicious. It comes mm. across as more... Um, kind of he's not comfortable doing that yet. <laughs> Omar Shadid seems more neutral. I'll, I'll just say your perception role covers him as well. He doesn't seem to care that much either way, frankly. <laughs> um, well, that makes sense. But yeah. Oh, she will nod and um, very honestly says that well, my lord, it would place me in a difficult position, and I would like to think about this offer, if that is okay with you. Of course. I would never ask for your answer on the spot. That would be most rude of me. Uh, if you... Well, when you make the decision, please just play a visit to... Uh, pay a visit to uh, the Marsha Deed. And, uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Shadid over here, and he will then, uh, he will inform me. But of course, uh, my offer remains on the table, and if you wish to negotiate further, I'm also open to, uh, that as well. I just thought I'd drop by. I hear you're a woman of many talents, and thought that, uh, you might be interested. Of course, uh, if you wish to decline the offer, that is also acceptable. My lord, I would have to lie if I would say that you have not caught my interest. Would it be something that would be open for just one other person besides yourself? Or would I be allowed to take a friend along. I suppose that would in many ways depend on the friend. <laughs> he kind of gives you a, a, a smile. <laughs> It, this uh, is somewhat devious, but more based in the fact that he's obviously making a statement that could be interpreted yeah, as an I insult. Mean, a friend. Hey, Lord Ulrich, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Crusade! <laughs> I burn these ruins to the ground. No. <laughs> she, uh, she nods, of course. Uh, my thoughts went to a acquaintance of mine who has a love for knowledge as much as I do, perhaps even deeper. Um, although his specialty lies in theology and not history, I think those two go hand in hand. And I think he would enjoy an expedition such as that immensely. Hmm. If I may have the uh, pleasure of meeting this person, be sure to send him me in uh, Mr. Shadid's way. Of course. Yes, yes, I think I've heard of this person. Uh, his name was quite popular back in... Uh, back in the West. Uh, Albertus, I think. My accent is just crumbling again. God, I can't do this at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was the name that he gave? Um, Omar just kind of snaps his fingers and is like, oh yeah, it's Obertus, that's right. Um, I've heard of that guy. Never had the pleasure of meeting him, but there's a first for everything, I suppose. She will 
blank. But we'll make no comments. <laughs> if you want to, I'll roll subterfuge for that. <laughs> Yeah, you roll it. Both of these assholes are rolling apathy. <laughs> that is more than fair. <laughs> um, oh my god, this guy is like no fucking empathy. Three successes. Well, one of these guys doesn't get to roll because <laughs> he has more successes than he has empathy. <laughs> he doesn't even roll. He's like three dice. Um, Omar does get to roll. Haha! Four nice. successes, finally! <laughs> okay, what he will catch on uh, the fact that she's not saying anything is that Albertus is not a name that is familiar to her, but she would not wish to insult, um, especially a member of her clan, by saying he has it wrong. Omar kind of raises an eyebrow and just says, What is it, sister? His name is most popular in, in the old city. I am afraid that just... was not the individual I was referring to. Ah. Uh, he looks kind of disappointed. That is a grave shame. If only because I now look like a fool. <laughs> I apologize. It was my own assumption. He oh, kind of he kind of shakes his head. Well then if I may uh if I may have the good uh good pleasure of being corrected. <laughs> I was referring to Lord Eclios. Yes, Eclios Obertus. I was right. <laughs> what is this? He kind of, he kind of <laughs> raises the hand, he kind of comical. <laughs> I have been deceived. <laughs> Inconceivable. Oh <my> <laughs> <laughs> and she will she will smile. She'll actually like like cover her, her mouth with her hands as to um show like oh oops <laughs> she looks greatly <laughs> amused that cave is just like <laughs> laughing and she'll just make like a uh a, a, a gesture like it's it's all in good fun you know uh, <laughs> like, now i can see why this one uh has such a reputation in elysium omar you'll have to keep your eyes out <laughs> Uh, Should he just kind of grumbles? <laughs> uh, no, no, this is, I, I would, not, it would not be fair to, to a brother to, to take that praise. I have become so used to simply calling him by his first name that I overlooked. This and I am definitely the one who should apologize. She will not to the uh, the other Lasombra in the room because I suck with names, so I'm not even gonna say it. <laughs> it's quite all right. I'll be honest, I'm not sure why his name was so popular back in Byzantium, but it appears to be a, a moniker taken by many. Mm. Just Teresa and rumors and all that, but when I heard the name, it aroused my curiosity. Maybe it might be something worth asking him if uh, you ever have the opportunity, considering you seem uh, so friendly with him. A few conversations, that's all, my lord. Uh, a few conversations is all it takes sometimes, you know? My lord, I hope you do not presume anything. You will roll yeah. perception empathy at that. Five successes! <laughs> wow! 
Well, you come across as oh, we can marry. <laughs> oh God, no! Um, she, she... Omar is like oh, gives you that look. <laughs> gives you oh my. No, oh. oh no, oh no. She honestly thinks him uh, sees him as as a friend, but like the idea to even get like anything other than that to her is simply um i wouldn't say appalling because that's definitely not the case um she very much enjoys the company of eclios but selim wants you to get married (laughs) yeah but she doesn't know that (laughs) she would not even come up with the notion of that like (laughs) that is not something that is on her mind at all so the 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 inclement of that is just stunning to her. <laughs> like, yes, yeah, she is off. You, she you is have... actually that innocent. <laughs> oh, she was that innocent, and it was. She is that broken. innocent. Um, Omar gets. I mean, normally I'd be like, "Oh, you get some vague level of information because empathy is not mind reading." But he literally got five successes. Yeah, so yeah, no, that's like why I'm like. like, like wow. And he picks up on an implication that you didn't mean to intend, but actually has some degree of truth to it, even though you don't yet know that. Yeah. <laughs> five successes on a five dice roll is actually impressive. Um, so, like, see, that's where all your successes went. <laughs> so they went. They went on getting this five dice guy. Five successes. That's actually ten. No, it's it's ten, nine, eight, seven, six. It literally goes down in order. Wow. <laughs> That's I wanna I wanna print screen that now. <laughs> um but yeah. Uh oh, well I'd never presume any presume anything, my good lady. He kinda gives he's like, I'll never presume anything. Notch notch. Um <laughs> If in such a way as to be deniable, but not blush. actually. <laughs> yeah, is is uh, it, not not in such a way as to actually den- uh, he, it, The way he says it is, is basically gives him uh, what do you call it? Uh, plausible deniability. <laughs> so even if you were insulted, you couldn't call him out on it because he said no. Of course, didn't give him anything. <laughs> okay, he looks completely amb- amb- ambivalent, but takes a great interest in what uh, Shadid seems to be implying. And then just kind of looks at you again. I will. She will like take a moment to um, get herself back together after this insinuation, and um, will then I smile again. I will. I will take your offer in consideration, and I will promise you that in a few days, well, a few nights. I apologize again. I will. I will make sure that you have my answer. My apologies, I was away for the last 10 seconds. That is totally fine and understandable. I heard the knock. <laughs> uh, basically, Irene said that, yeah, she would, um, she would think about the answer and would make sure that in a few nights she would um, get back to it and give them a yes or a no. That is most acceptable. I thank you for your graciousness and for allowing me to be within your presence, my lady. (laughs) I know this must have come as a surprise to you. It is, but that does not mean it is an unpleasant one. The pleasure was all mine, and if you would excuse me, I have to see to some of my other business now. Of course. I would not dare keep you any longer, and he will bow towards you. And Omar Shadid would bow and say, I do, uh, I do apologize for uh, depriving you of your escort home. That is quite all right. This was a lovely conversation to have, and I am sure that there will be many to follow, with both you and my previous host. And she'll, like, 
curtsy as well. Both of the both of the gentlemen, and then, yeah, go on her way. And with that, I think we can end the scene as uh, Irene conveniently arrives to her size haven alone with no real evidence of any significant <laughs> activity happening. Um, how how wonderful. How how oh. wonderfully convenient. GG so Tom. Convenient. <laughs> um and with that, I think we can end our scene there. Uh, thank you, player, for playing. Thank you, watchers, for watching. We'll see you next time on another wonderful episode of I Am Terrible at Middle Eastern Accents, the game. <laughs>